With a big Orlando event happening this week, and there's a lot of things to take into consideration about what this event actually is going to entail, who's going to be taking part of it, what to look out for, and some of the news that's been kind of generated recently by HAS and Taji about this weekend. So I consider Mr. Devious Grant a bit of an expert when it comes to HCS analysis. Not only is he a fan, he also works for the HCS team, but he's actually part of like the team that kind of clips out all the highlights. So he has to sit there and watch all these games. So he's the guy who's probably seen the most HCS gameplay of anybody I know personally. So Mr. Devious Grunt, I appreciate you coming by and uh, we to talk about some Halo greatness. Right, let's talk about Orlando. Orlando's going to be an important event. This is the big event before Worlds. The top 12 at this event, that place at this event, are going to the World Championship in just literally, I think, less than a month. So this is a really big tournament for a lot of teams. This is the last LAN that we have until world, the World Championship, and we haven't had a LAN in like four to five months. So a lot of, a lot of drama, a lot of just like storylines are heading to this LAN. It's going to be a really fun event. Yeah, this is much different than what we saw for like the online super, right? Where it was uh, like obviously online, but it was only for North America teams. This one, we have the whole world involved with the entire uh, process when it comes to figuring out who is the best team in the right. HCS. Exactly. And so uh, in today's video, I wanted to go over talking about uh, some of the news that's been recently going on about that. I also talk yep. about the GAs that have been talked about within the community at HCS and also some of the roster, big key roster changes that are hugely different from what we saw from the mm -hmm. last major event and then finish off with like a little bit of a preview that we saw over the weekend and then ultimately predictions of who we think is going to win the pools, who we think is going to go top three and who's going to win the whole dang thing. So right. first off, we got to talk about the recent news that's been going on about the world premiere that was basically being talked about. Now, right. this is something I am very curious about because when you have Halo, I mean, it's HCS tweeting this out, so it's not exactly like Halo themselves, right? But mm -hmm. it's a frat portion of the team. But when you have a representative of Halo saying like, hey, world premiere announcement happening here involving H Halo 3, it looks like with possible like the Halo 3 throwdown was like a bunch of, uh, you know, prominent pros and stuff like that really makes you wonder, is it really going to be something special? And I'm curious, right. Mr. Grunt, do you have anything to talk about that? What do I think? Um, well, being a part of the HS team recently, I will say um, I actually know exactly what is going to happen. And I will say that, you know, some people's guesses, they're kind of on point. A lot of people, their guesses aren't on point. Um, I would refer to Tashi's tweet on the whole situation, whereas it's going to be a very cool thing, but don't get your expectations up too high. Okay, so don't get your hopes up too high. But yeah. it's like when you see a Halo tweet out, world it's premiere, weird. it gets you excited. I can't help. It's weird. It, it's good marketing. I'll say that. It's good marketing. <laughs> it I, think it's gotten, I think that's part of it. Like It's gotten a lot of people talking, and you know, you just got to wait until Sunday, which is... I will say Sunday is a weird date to reveal. Usually they do the, uh, the show matches, I think, on like Friday evening. I thought the same so, too. That was an odd time to do it. Right. So Sunday, like we're going straight into Championship Sunday. Um, but I guess like we'll have a little like chill thing before things get really intense. But uh, So recently on Tashi's stream, he uh, was asked a question about Last Spartan Standing. And it sounded like more in the way of being played by the people who are going to the event rather than like an event itself. Saying that Last Spartan Standing is going to get some extra love. We got some good news, dude. That's all I'm going to say. Stick around. Last Spartan standing is going to get some extra love. That's going to be interesting to see if there's going to be like some kind of side event going on between the fans of like a competitive Last Spartan standing. I mean, do you think that would be something that would be pretty cool to check out? You know, it's definitely possible. A lot of these events, they have uh, a side FFA event that's always going on. And who knows, maybe they might swap out that FFA event for the Last Spartan standing. Um, I will say Devil's Advocate, I know Last Spartan Standing has been being too hot in terms of popularity lately, so they might try to deviate from that. But I think with um, how long of a gap we've had since the last event, Last Spartan Standing is a new feature like it introduced to this whole pro atmosphere. So I think seeing like the top pros playing Last Spartan Standing would be really sick. So Some new GAs that the community has been talking on right. a lot. Uh, <laughs> we've been GAing the Mangler throughout the entirety of season one. Uh, but now the recent talk of doing a GA when it comes to the drop mechanic and also the sword 
in Halo Infinite. And I wanted to kind of see what your take is on it. I will say, I think the GAs to at a point are getting a little bit out of hand. I, I'd see a lot of, I've been seeing a lot of people even going back on the whole Mangler GA, which is kind of ironic with, it was like the first one to even pop up. Um, I have seen also like disagreements. I think some players and certain teams, I know Aperture comes to mind that he's not going to pay attention to any GAs and that could cause a lot of issues, you know, come like a really important match. It's going to be some interesting drama, let's say, if people were to break GAs in the stage. But I think from my perspective, like even looking uh, like from the casual like fan base and from competitive, I think it is getting a little bit too crazy. I think you're kind of alienating like what makes Halo Infinite Halo Infinite. And I think some things like weapon drops, it's really, it's not a big deal, but also like why even take it out? Like it's just, it's a small thing that makes Halo Infinite unique. Just keep that in. I think mainly the drop thing became around because of the Mangler. I don't really see a whole lot of other people utilizing the drop mechanic besides with the Mangler. I mean, maybe with like the plasma pistol, but the tracking on it, it's so bad. That's like, you don't even worth the picking argument. Up. The argument with the drop weapon is that people only spawn with the BR so they can't, I believe, yeah, they can't drop their weapon when they spawn off, but people who are on the map, they can drop their weapon and do like a combo. Uh, so it's really unfair to people who are spawning off without having that ability to, to drop their weapon and get that quicker kill. That's like, and also it's pretty easy to pick up a weapon in the game as well. Like usually when you spawn, you're near something you can usually pick yeah. up. So I think the whole like, you know, GA and the drop, also, the thing that like GA and the sword, it's like, well, it wasn't really an issue before, but now it is. I can understand why, because he mentioned there's not really much of a counter to it, which is yeah. kind of the biggest issue that a lot of people are having with it. What are your that's thoughts on the, the thing, sword? Yeah, that's the thing that I kind of, it kind of just trickles down because again, the sword wasn't GA before, but all of a sudden it's a problem. Like what else is going to be a problem within a month? I don't know. So I think the sword GA, uh, I understand it. I think the sword maybe wasn't the most competitive weapon to even begin with. But it's just the fact that it just became decided, like, let's just GA the sword all of a sudden. It sets a bad precedent for, like, other weapons or abilities they might want to GA. I agree. I mean, I remember when I was doing, like, the 2v2 tournament, uh, back we were GAing the sword because, well, in a 2v2, the sword is very powerful. A little bit too much. Yeah, yeah a, little a little too much. Too. But, like, when you're in a 4v4 tournament, I think it's fine, personally, but maybe that's just me. But I don't know. Like I said, like you've been saying, I'm not a pro player either. I mean, even yeah. Tashi also mentioned that, the, you know, he doesn't like having GAs in the game, but it's up to the players to kind of follow through with what they want because, well, 343, like he even said, is kind of dropping the ball when it comes to the support. Ultimately, we just need to get updates out the door to try to balance these things. So, you know, I don't necessarily blame pros for... You know, trying to Can do what they can to uphold the balance. Honestly, we haven't upheld our end of the bargain, so I don't blame them. Ultimately, I don't think GAs are good for the scene, but they're, in my mind, a symptom of a bigger problem that we need to solve. So, All right, so yeah. since the last time we've uh, had a chance to talk, we've seen some pretty big shakeups, even though like, there was already some big shakeups before the NA Super that we talked about. Uh, but this was more kind of, you know, not as many changes, but still a good amount to where it's definitely gonna shake things up quite a bit. Uh, the biggest one being that Pistola sounds like he's actually gonna retire, it sounds like, because he's recently was officially released from Optic. You think there's any hope um, of him coming back? <laughs> so if I'm Pistola, I'm looking at season two. I'm looking at Mikwin, who's gonna be able to compete year two. I'm looking at potentially Snipe Down, which, you know, we don't know if he's going to Apex 100%, he may or may not. And that's that's his old like God Squad team from Halo 5 right there. Him, Mikwin, and Snipedown. They just gotta find a nasty fourth. And you got that team Envy team back. So if anything, I'm looking at that scenario for Pistola. But right now, even from like inside Intel, no one knows what's going on. He just kinda took a step back ever since he got dropped. Yeah, and then uh, I think I checked out his official gamer tag you might be using like a pseudo one or whatever like that but uh yeah. i think the last time i checked on, on halo tracker last time he played about the was i believe in march so it's it's been a hot mess since he's played uh, some halo infinite but i mean kind of understandable because yeah. there really hasn't been much changing with the game or in the plus the sentiment to halo infinite in general hasn't really been super high uh so since then the last time i talked we also had like i said snipe down went to e united we had yeah. uh, King Nick move over the phase. We have a brand new Fnatic roster. Uh, there's been changes with Navi as well. Uh, Space Station Game has completely gutted their roster and has basically signed in the Knights team as yeah. their SSG team. 
Um, Tylenol is like nowhere to be seen in this whole situation right now. Uh, we did see that Ace recently announced teaming up with Super CC and some other players as well. Uh, this might be, might as well call it KCP 2.0 with uh, Native Gaming. Pick it up those guys. And then also, one interesting thing I just want to point out is Collect, who used to be on Space Station Gaming. He recently put out like an interesting tweet here. He just tweeted out saying, New me with what looks like to be the Sentinel's coding on this battle rifle, but he also tags Boo Boo Doo Boo from G1. So I want to know. Where is Collect going? Because a lot of people have high hopes on this guy being like uh, kind of like a new talent, new phenom almost when it comes to competitive Halo. I want to know if you had anything to say about that. Yeah. So just to reference that tweet, I'm pretty sure that Boopoo Doo Boo at was in reference to, I think, like a certain controller setting that Boopoo Doo Boo used. Um, I'm not sure of the exact reasoning, but I read it somewhere. It wasn't anything too deep in that regard. Boopoo Doo Boo is definitely very set with this g1 roster they've been looking nasty in terms of where collect is going though it's it's a very odd situation right because going into this season uh two players i really had my eye on were collect and vetro those are two like upcoming young guns i think it might be a situation where you know a lot of players like you know like i sniped down uh got moved around uh, like manny was going back and forth between kcp which is now native red um from e united and I just you know collect got that short end of the stick he might just sit out until he's season two because he wants to keep his stock up uh going with the last minute team you're not going to play as well especially if all these really practiced teams who are all grinding going to worlds as so i think yeah. we got a bit of a preview of how this whole orlando event's gonna pan out and that's with the e united grunt classic that they recently held this was just like straight up just a 4v4 tournament right like nothing too crazy about it yeah for seventh and eighth place we had uh ascend and native and then we had native red at fifth six with tying up with g1 about nine at fourth phase at third sentinels at second and then optic i guess you can call them the online warriors now of halo <laughs> finishing in first place right now so i'm wondering like do you think this whole event right here is going to be kind of how orlando is going to pan out or are you going to be listening to some things being a little different i think it's very close but again some teams they play differently in land look at sentinels look at cloud nine even though they have like a one player swap on cloud nine that team's gonna play better like without a doubt on land and there's gonna be a lot of question marks like how's this phase team gonna do how is um you know kcp a lot of people aren't are forgetting about this uh, native red roster they're kcp these guys are awesome they've been top six consistent so they can repeat in that slot again or even do better and of course, Optic, you call them maybe the quote unquote online warriors. I wouldn't really pin them like that yet. Oh, yeah. No, um, that was just me being a little coy with that. Right, right. It's fun. <laughs> a lot. Of, no, it's a, it's an issue, though, because a lot of people, you know, they do question their validity as like the number one team because it has been that way for the last four months. They've been winning everything online. So I think, um, you know, Optic they definitely have a chance to win. This could be the make or break moment and they should win. They should win. They, they are the top team without a doubt for the last four months. They are the only team, fun fact, they're the only team that willingly decided to not make a team switch throughout the entire last four months. It's going to be very tough, and I think Sentinels will be their toughest competition there. Yeah, you mentioned that it was a really close tournament uh, game when it comes to the finals yeah. of that uh, Grunt Classic, where I'm looking at the stats right here, the Sentinels won the first three out of the first four matches. And so they just and, needed to win one more game, but an Optic 3 0 the rest of the series to right, win like, the whole thing. So it was real close. Um, so as long as Optic beats FaZe in that pool play match, I can see them pretty easily getting top three. But if they lose to FaZe in a pool play match, they need to face Cloud9, they need to face Sentinels potentially very early, which can really disrupt their tournament. So honestly, I think pool plays make a break for them. So now while you're on the topic of pool playing, these teams playing against each other, let's talk about these pools right here and see who yeah. you think is going to be finishing on top who you think is going to be kind of in the pool of hell who's in the glory pool and stuff like that if that makes mm -hmm. sense at all. uh so let's start with pool a we have optic gaming phase sand chiefs and also an open bracket but usually the open brackets don't really yeah. blend themselves so, too much so what, what are your thoughts on this so far for pool yeah. a so this is the pool of death right this is it's branded that way people are calling it that and it's exactly that um, if open bracket goes, goes the way that people expect it to, that last team is going to be complexity. So this team, this pool is going to be even more stacked than it already is. I think Optic still has the best chance to take it, but I, I don't know. Just part of me feels like something weird is going to happen here. 
Um, it, it all depends on how FaZe plays. Because with FaZe, I'm very curious to see if FaZe is just going to be on fire against Optic. It's very possible we get a crazy upset in this pool play match. I still think Optic wins. I think I think Optic wins, but even saying that doesn't sound right. I almost feel like FaZe is going to win. Um, you think Optic's going to win, definitely, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Optic's yeah. walking away with this pool. Though FaZe Easy, definitely, yeah. you know put a couple of dents within this whole pool here, but what do you think was the big difference between FaZe with Snipe Down than FaZe now with King Nick? Because with Snipe Down, they finished with like, they tied for eighth place, I remember at the online event, and then this online event, they finished in third place. So that's a significant difference between these teams. Do you think yeah. that it was maybe the teamwork a little bit better since Spartan and Nick seem to work out pretty well together? It's all the team vibe. Uh, even switching out one player can just dramatically change that emotional just connection between everyone. I think it's a combination of that and also a combination of just them finally finding out their strategy. I think they really exhibited that in this uh, Grunt Classic. They had some incredible breaks when people like teams had their setups. So they, they, they are practicing like what they had to do now. So I think Optic will win the group phase second, Ascend third. Um, I think even people are saying that Ascend will upset phase again. I think Ascend, they kind of took a hit with their roster. Could eat those words later on. We'll see if phase kind of comes flat. But um, I think Ascend third um, will have, honestly, Complexity fourth. If Complexity's in this pool and then the Chiefs will get uh, the last spot. Yeah, missing par code, it's going to really hurt the Chiefs. Yeah, and I think complexity look really solid. And then we have Pool B with G1, Native Red, aka former KCP, Quadrant, right. another solid EU team, and uh, Cinta Negra. And then we have another open spot right there as well. Now, mm -hmm. G1, I feel like kind of underperformed during this uh, Grunt Classic event a little bit compared to their second place finish on the EU, or not saying the, mm -hmm. uh, the NA Super event. Uh, yeah. Was there anything you noticed about G1 this time around? So I was thinking about that, of why they performed like like not as good as they did, because I was expecting them to play like a place at least top four at this Grand Classic, but they really underperformed. Um, and I think really, if I'll be honest, I think what it boils down to is just all these other teams are catching up. A team like G1, like it has really talented players, but a lot of them are new, like they're brand new players and not really used to this, um, you know, all stakes environment. So I think honestly, they didn't play bad. It's just that all these other teams with this insane talent, they are just going full force grinding and catching up. I think their big match that they lost to, which is actually they're in the pool. Um, was this uh, native red, native red roster, which is the old KCP roster? They lost three two in uh, the Grunt Classics, which kind of ruined their bracket. Um, I think they lost immediately to whatever team was in the lower bracket. I think Native Red um, on paper they still are nasty. I think uh, you know top six uh, for the tournament's performance is very likely for them. So I think getting first in this group here is very likely. I am a Boo 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 fan. I love his whole just story of going to phase and finding his success on this roster. So I would put my bets on G1 still coming up first here. Uh, Native Red getting second. I'll take Quadrant. Like usually with Friday, you know, it's kind of just like, you know, whatever. They just kind of hop on and play some Halo with nothing like too crazy to watch, right? Nothing's really on the you know, high stakes at that moment. But if you just want to watch yeah. some good Halo on Friday, Definitely check out the native red G1 games. That's going to be a tough Ooh. match for sure. One thing I forgot, I mean, this is actually worth mentioning. Um, this native red roster, they always perform well in pool play for whatever reason. Like they play really well Friday. So I actually think them getting first in this group makes it even more likely. And I think that just having their experience on LAN and G1, like they haven't really played on LAN yet. It's going to be kind of weird. But G1 definitely has been putting in the time. They've been grinding. Mm -hmm. For points so they definitely have earned their keep at least when it comes to halo yeah it's, it's all hard work with them all hard work they they've been grinding since when a anyone else wasn't i think just on like a moral compass they deserve their good placements because of the hard work exactly let's see if they can perform under pressure that's going to be the test we'll see sentinels g2 we have navi and then cruelty for my expectation on this one it's probably gonna be sent it's gonna be sentinels in my opinion and then probably G2, the Navi, then maybe Cruelty. I'm not quite sure who's on Cruelty. Yeah, I think this pool is pretty predictable. I think Sentinel should get first pretty easily. Uh, Navi, I think their new pickup of Mighty is awesome. Keep a lookout for him individually. He was making big plays in the uh, EU uh, Super 
or like the EU regional finals they had. But G2, the well-versed barcode top talent from A and Z, they're going to be great. And I think that series against Sentinels might be fun, but Sentinels, they're going to be a very strong team. I'll say now Sentinels will be in the grand finals, without a doubt. Pool D, the final pool to look at, we have Cloud9, E United, J-Lings Esports, and then Space Station Gaming. Now, this yeah. Space Station is not the Space Station you know. This is a completely different roster. This is the Knights roster that's now part of Space Station Gaming. Yeah. A lot of people are writing them off. A lot of people are writing them off. I even saw like a prediction that they're getting top 24 of this event. They got top eight, I'm pretty sure, at KCM. I might be wrong. I might be completely wrong. It's either top eight or top, I think it was top 12. But they could have very easily got top eight from what I remember. Yeah, they have so, uh, like, they have tappy, tappy Buttons, right? And he's yeah. on the team and he's one, if not the best from the Mexico region, if not mm -hmm. one of the better players like in the league in general. Like, like he was part of the All-Star game and you know, he, yeah. he kicked butt. He did great. Between Cloud9 and E United, with the snipe down E United, by the way, what do you think is going to come out of that? And seeing him in E United, it's actually uh, like a home for him. E United plays very slow. Snipe down plays very slow in general nowadays, and even just in his play style is very slow. So this team, this system kind of works for him. They didn't do too hot in the Grunt Classic at all. They got like top 12 and that's terrible. That's a terrible placing for this caliber team. This team's been in the top five conversation for the entire season. Granted, I think this event, a lot of people underrate Ryanoob on LAN. He's been proving people wrong this entire year. So I think they're gonna perform better, but we're talking about Cloud9. I, I know Cloud9 has been not looking you know, as great lately, but again, Cloud9, they're not great online. I know they are not, at the caliber they were with Renegade, at least seemingly so. But they're going to be better than United here. They're going to be better than Space Station here. I expect Cloud9 to get first here. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised for a Space Station upset against United. So we've knocked out about who's going to be kind of fighting out and coming out on top when it comes to the pool play. But let's talk about who's going to walk away with a good amount of cash. This one, who's going to be in the top four of this event? So Mr. Devious Grant, who is going to be your fourth place finish for the Orlando LAN event. I'm having fourth place as, as much as it hurts to say this, Cloud9. When you look at the other three teams, you have to admit Cloud9 has taken a hit. And I think, you know, placing a little bit lower than second might be in the cards for them. My team, this is kind of a coin flip between FaZe and G1 for me, but I'm just so much of a fanboy of them. I think I might have to go G1 finishing yeah, in fourth place awesome. on this one. Mm -hmm. Because you know they've been, because yeah, they've been grinding out. They finished second place in the online event. I think they're going to do pretty well for themselves. They might have just underperformed for the grind classic kind of thing. Especially as the servers have been kind of messed up recently. Let's be real. Three, I'll take the lead on this one. I'll say Cloud Nine is going to walk away as number three guess. right here. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that for number three for you? All right, this one it's going to be like shocker, ding ding ding. Um, I'm having optic. I'm having optic coming third. Oh really? Yeah. And that sounds crazy. So this is their make or break event. And I'm a hater. I'm a hater, man, for having them in third <laughs> place. But I'm going to be having them in third place here. Man, I bet you probably didn't even pick up the coding, did you? Oh, my gosh. It's like the one I, coding look cool. <laughs> it's the only one I didn't get, actually. The only oh, one. wow. Wow. Oh, no, that's a true hater move right there. <laughs> I actually, actually haven't gotten any of the codings so far. So okay, good. Right. Yeah. All right. So then that leaves us with the second place finish. Who do you think is going to be coming away with that one? I mean, you kind of, yeah. kind of teased us already earlier about who you think is going to be in the grand finals, but who do you think is going to be finishing second place? Um, I think it's FaZe. I think FaZe, they have what it takes. I think Falcated, he's one of the most underrated players the entire year. He has what it takes to perform at the top level. Renegade is going to be playing different on Sunday. He's going to be playing as the quote-unquote best player in the game. He will rise to the occasion. He always does. Barton, top 10 player easily this entire year. And Nick, that's the question mark, right? And how's Nick gonna fit in the system? I think they've been working on the system pretty early on. It's been working really well. Yeah, they're a bit of a wild card team for sure. It's like, it just depends how they play that day. They can either be a, a top two team or they could be a top eight team kind of thing. My choice would be Sentinels. I think Sentinels are gonna be finishing in second place here. I think it's kind of indicative of what we saw for the Grand Classic. Like mm -hmm. they definitely could walk away with it. Don't get me wrong. But I think this also <laughs> might just be personal bias coming in here. Mm -hmm for why I'm choosing Sentinels to be in second place. But uh, so yeah, I'm having Optic walk away with the whole thing. One, Trippy is my teammate. I got to support him, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Had him in the I airlock yeah. tournament. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just like, 
you know, they, they, been, they won the Grunt Classic event. They won the online, uh, North American Super as well. They're one of the teams that have really been sticking together as a roster, which that does play a huge factor when it comes to how well yep. these teams play. I and I plus I bought the coding. I got I got I got to look like uh, I know what I'm talking go. about, you know. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So then the, the questions there this is to be asked. Then who is going to be your number one pick for this event? So, and I thought about this with some other people too. I think without a doubt, Sentinels will be in the grand finals. And I think for this tournament, they will win this tournament. And the reason I say that is because Sentinels has been a team since 20, I think 15, they formed. It may, might have been 2016 on, on the brink. Yeah, I think it was 2016, right before um, X Games. It might have been 2015. But they have not dropped out of your grand final since the inception of their team. But yeah, well, Mr. Devious Grant, I think that's all I have uh, to talk with you today. And so I want to say thank you again for coming on to the channel once again to talk about some HGS. About to have you on again for the Seattle event happening next month. And probably again after that, as like a yearly recap of how the whole season was. Because, you know, right. HGS is awesome. It's always very fun to watch. So. If you are, anyone here is new to the channel or has not seen Devious Grunt, where can you find your content? Right, so you can find my channel, Devious Grunt Alliance, on YouTube. Again, we're a little bit out of a hiatus right now just because I've been putting kind of like a lot of my time towards the HES channel, making content there. But I will definitely have a highlights for this actual event coming out for this event since I'll be clipping for the event. Um, so yeah, you can find me in there. My Twitter, Devious Grunt HCS on Twitter. Um, do what you want. You know, I'm not telling you to do anything, but if you want, you can check me out there. No, give him a follow. He deserves it. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. It was always a pleasure to have these conversations. I love just having these, honestly, just check-ins with you. They're really fun. And uh, yeah, it was another great conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all that gets like go go subscribe to the HGS channel then if you want to catch some more Divas Grand right? content. If you're not, right? if you're not for some reason. Go yeah, ahead. right. If you're watching this video but you're not subscribed there, you're just weird. I mean, come it's on. It's a good idea. I recommend it. <laughs> again, thank you all. Thank you again for coming on to the channel. And uh, if you guys are new to the channel, for your time, that subscribe button. Catch you next time. We'll go talk about anything HGS related or just Halo in general. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. <laughs>